Welcome to the Cross in the Desert, speaking hope and freedom to Iran. I'm your host, Randy Old Noble. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to meet with me. The subject for tonight's program is entitled, A Stoning in Pakistan, and I'll explain why in just a few minutes. One of the chief attributes of God in Christianity is the attribute of mercy. And all Christians are very grateful that this is, as I say, God's middle name, mercy and forgiveness. The reason we can say that is because all of us have broken God's holy law in thought, word, and deed. And we're very grateful that he is indeed merciful and forgiving. And I want to talk to you tonight a little bit about the mercy of God. And I'm going to show you some pictures along with verses that just outline the character of God. This first one is a beautiful picture. It's from Psalm 103. And if you can see that a little bit clearer, I'm going to hold it up right there for you. It says, The Lord is merciful and gracious. He is slow to get angry and full of unfailing love. The Lord is merciful and gracious. He is slow to get angry. I like that. And filled with unfailing love. Psalm 103. I think verse 18. This next scripture is a beautiful one. It's from the book of Lamentations. As Jeremiah looks out at the destruction of Jerusalem, his heart is broken. And he looks forward to God being merciful for their great sin. And this is a picture of the sunrise. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. A beautiful hymn of the Christian church. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. It's so true. His mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. We could go on and on. Uh, the Lord is filled with mercy and compassion and unfailing love. We could cite scripture after scripture, but there's a reason that I'm emphasizing the mercy of God. There is a particular verse in the book of James. James writing to the Christian church, to the Jews scattered abroad, and he was talking about sin in the church. And there's a particular scripture, James chapter 2, verse 13, where James chides the believers. He says, There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. I, I want to emphasize that again. James is illustrating a very important principle. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, James says, then God will be merciful when he judges you. A very important principle here about showing and demonstrating mercy. And this picture illustrates what we're going to talk about tonight. This is a picture of Jesus and the encounter with a woman caught in adultery. One short statement. He forgave. It's the basis of what we're going to talk about tonight. For the last week, all over the internet, all of us, at one time and another in our busy day, were just startled by this horrible act of barbary, this barbaric act of stoning. And it was about a woman in Pakistan. I want to show you her picture. And this is a gruesome picture. And this is a picture of Farzana Parveen a 25-year-old woman publicly stoned to death by her family. Now the usual way this barbaric medieval practice takes place as a woman is accused of adultery and she is brought before a council and she is buried up to her chest in the ground while family members execute 
persecute her and stone her because she has brought in some dishonor and shame upon the community through her adultery. And therefore, the prescription is stoning. I want to talk to you tonight about this barbaric act. 25-year-old Farzana Parveen had decided she wanted to marry a man that she loved. His name was Mohammed. And the family, at first, welcomed this marriage. But after Farzana's mother died, they condemned it. They said, no, uh, Farzana, we have decided for you to marry your cousin in the village here, in, in, the, in the country of Pakistan. It was just outside of the city of Lahore. Well, Farzana objected to this marriage. She rather would have married a man that she chose to marry, a man that she loved. His name was Muhammad. Now, ironically, Muhammad himself was married before. And six years before this, he had killed his own wife and instead wanted to marry Farzana. And of course, that's wrong what he did. And it just adds more dimension to this horrid, terrible story. But the family ob objected and were basically enraged when they found out that on January 7th, Farzana had married Muhammad against their own wishes. She had chosen this man, even knowing his past, and this is the man she chose to love. And instead of marrying her cousin, as the family had prescribed for her, she married him. Well, they lived in fear of their safety. And what happened was they took this case to the court in Lahore. And they trumped up a charge saying that, quote, Muhammad had abducted um, Farzana and that this marriage should be annulled. Well, of course, that wasn't true. It was consensual. So Farzana herself decided to go to the court after meeting with her lawyer, her and her husband, Mohammed. She's three months pregnant now. Keep that in mind. And they go to this court building to contest this accusation. And when they show up at court, much like we see in this scene, a little bit different, but much like it, it's broad daylight. And of course, she's not buried in the ground up to her chest. As she walks with her husband toward the courtroom, 20 of the family members, including her father, pick up bricks and stone Farzana to death and leave her looking like this. They publicly stoned her to death for marrying a man of her own choice. Now earlier, they had demanded 100,000 rubles and said that if you pay this, we'll call off our execution. But of course, they were too poor to pay this. But the point being, it was her choice. They didn't respect her choice. And because she went against the family choice, she brought dishonor onto the community and they publicly killed Farzana. I go back to this picture here. There was a similar situation in the Bible. A little bit different, but similar. The Pharisees and the scribes throughout Jesus' ministry did everything they could to discredit him. They pitted him against God's law. And what they did in this case, they brought to Jesus a woman caught in the act of adultery. And they said, Jesus, this woman here has been caught in the very act of adultery. Moses, in his law, prescribes that this woman should be stoned. And what do you say? Now, of course, they did this for a reason. But I want you to know something about the Bible and about this particular story. According to the law of Moses, the man she committed adultery was to be stoned along with the woman. And it had to be on the word of two or three witnesses to the adultery. What's lacking in this account in the Bible is the witnesses and also the man himself in the adulterous act. And Jesus knows their hearts. And so 
he begins to kneel down and write in the sand. And many, many theologians have debated what it is Jesus is writing with his finger in the sand. But if you know anything about the Bible, the Bible talks about that God himself wrote the Ten Commandments with his own finger. And so what I think Jesus is doing as the great lawgiver and judge, as God manifested in the flesh, he is rubbing his finger in the sand and writing their sins. You see, the Pharisees and the scribes were trying to discredit Jesus. They said, Jesus, if you condemn this woman to stoning, then your reputation as being merciful to sinners is on the line. No one's going to think you're merciful. And Jesus, if you say, no, this woman shouldn't be stoned, then you're a false prophet. You're going against the law of Moses. So you're trapped, Jesus. We have you here. Really? But Jesus, in his wisdom, looks up to them after writing their sins, I think, in the sand. And he says to them, He that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. And all of them walk away. Why? Because even the hypocrites know that they've broken God's law, and they are not without sin. And Jesus turns to the woman and says, Where are your accusers? Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now, I, I want to point out something to you here. Jesus is not going soft on the law. But he is showing us here in this beautiful story that number one, the Pharisees and scribes did not fulfill the conditions of stoning. They didn't bring the witnesses. They didn't bring the man accused. And so this is not a legitimate case for stoning. And that's true. Jesus wasn't being soft on the law. But what I think he's showing here more than anything is how much he loves you and me as sinners and lawbreakers. It's true. This woman was caught in the act of adultery. But God in his mercy stepped in and showed mercy where mercy was undeserved. You see, this woman was an adulteress, but he showed mercy to her and kept them from doing this, the stoning in, in this situation. That's the way Jesus treats you and me. We too are guilty of breaking his law, and yet he steps in and pardons us. He stops the execution. He shows his mercy and his compassion. I love this story, and it goes back to our scripture. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. What about those that stoned Farzana? They showed no mercy, and they showed hatred, and they had a law saying that she broke the law and dishonored the community, but they showed no mercy. God's word says, if they showed none, neither will I show them any at all in the judgment. But you see, what I want to say, even though these people were truly wrong, we need to pray for them to repent of what they did to this innocent woman so that God will show mercy to them. You see, mercy is who God is. And when I thought of Farzana, I thought of the Bible story of Jesus and the adulterous woman. What Jesus would have done had he been there when these family members stoned Farzana. I really hope and pray that tonight you've seen something of the God the Christians worship, that he is a God of love and mercy and compassion. This is my hope and prayer for all of my Iranian friends, that they know the God that I serve and worship, that they come to know Christ as a man full of compassion and mercy, and that's who Jesus is. I want to thank you for spending time tonight and going with me through this story about a stoning in Pakistan. If you'd like to be my friend on Facebook, come to my Facebook page and type in my name, Randy L. Noble, and friend request me. And you'll learn about all of the happenings that are going on in Iran. I appreciate your time tonight. God bless you, and I will see you on the next 
Cross in the Desert. Good night.